What is up my Motivate Warriors and welcome back to another video and another Do It Right episode. This time we're going to be taking a look at the hamstrings in particular and the Do It Right series is all about how we can stretch or properly get those areas. We take a look at all of those common flexibility things. We go over the myths, the do's, the don'ts and how you can best attack it. So let's just jump straight into it. First of all, just to address the uh, pitiful mustache that is on my face, and that is because it is Movember and I'm growing a mo to save a bro. If you would like to donate, there's a link in the top of the description. Would highly appreciate you supporting a good cause. Right, so the hamstrings, I've done an entire video that is probably one of the most popular videos on this channel about why you can't pike and pancake when it comes to stretching the hamstrings. And I'll link that one in the description down below. But essentially that video goes over one of the mistakes that I'm gonna cover in this video. But I kind of want to evolve my opinion that I presented in that video because my knowledge has changed and my opinion has changed. So with that being said, let's jump into the first part, which is the do's and don'ts when it comes to hamstring stretching. So mistake number one, probably the biggest mistake, is that it's all lower back and no hamstrings. And what I mean by this was really the point that I was trying to get across in that first video that I mentioned, and that is, especially beginners, people who are tight, when they start to stretch the hamstrings, you see a lot of movement happening at the lower back and very little happening at the hips. The hips are locked up. Now to really progress, you need to understand how to anteriorly tilt the hips to stretch the hamstrings. This does not always mean that you need to have a neutral back when it comes to stretching the hamstrings, but it is useful to start with a neutral back because then you understand how to work the movement happening at the hips. If you only use the hip hinge to stretch your hamstrings, you will reach a point in which you literally cannot go any further and then the rest will have to be completed by the lower back. I'm not saying that rounding the lower back is bad. There needs to be a bit of both when we're trying to express our hamstring flexibility at its best. Mistake number two and something that's not always thought of is only stretching the hamstrings to get more flexible with your hamstrings. And this isn't necessarily true. There's lots of things that can inhibit our hamstring flexibility that aren't necessarily the hamstrings themselves. Two very quick examples of this would be number one, the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve is a nerve that runs from the lower back all the way down underneath the foot. This nerve is commonly problematic and can cause some restriction when it comes to hamstring flexibility. So making sure you take care of that with some flossing, for example. This is actually covered in my beginner hamstring flexibility routine, which is on this channel, in that we go over some nerve stuff to begin with. So I'll link that one in the description down below. And then the second example would be the calves. The calves can really commonly inhibit the hamstrings. Both the hamstring and the calf cross the knee. So when we're straight legged and we're trying to stretch our hamstrings, the calf could almost come into play. So we might want to stretch those as well. Again, that is covered in the beginner hamstring flexibility routine. A really simple way to see if this is an issue for you is to try to touch your toes, then do some nerve flossing or some calf stretching, then go back and touch your toes. Does it feel better? Does it feel worse? The mistake number three is more of a personal preference and that is not stretching with enough intensity. Now what I mean by this is that the hamstrings themselves are a powerful muscle group. They're very fast twitch, they're very explosive. And often our knee jerk reaction when we're stretching them is to do a nice relaxed stretch and we kind of pull on them gently. Through coaching and through my experience, I found that the hamstrings actually do respond better to some higher intensity stretching. Developing flexibility in a more dynamic and strength building way than developing it with just stretching alone. Something like the Romanian deadlift would be a fantastic example of how we can develop hamstring flexibility with a little more intensity and less worrying about just sitting in a stretch statically. There's benefits to both ways of training, but just from my personal experience when it comes to making long-term progress and also making progress with particularly tight individuals, training hamstrings with some intensity tends to work pretty well. So with that being said, those are the kind of the do's and don'ts in my opinion on training the hamstrings and getting more flexible in the hamstrings. Now I thought it would be a good chance to share with you kind of my personal favorite hamstring exercise at the moment. If you do want some more specific advice and you want to have a program and have a routine, then there's always my app Tribe, which again, is always the top link in the description down below. We have routines for flexibility, handstands, beginners, strength, mass gain, you name it, we've got it. It'll be linked in the description down below. 
So the exercise that I want to share with you for the hamstring stretching is actually two exercises and that's because the first one I kind of can't mention because it's one of the best ones when it comes to beginners and that is the standing single leg good morning. This is the one I covered in the main hamstring video that's popular on this channel and that is when we stand in a stride stance so we have the back leg to assist us, the focus on the front leg and then we focus on stretching the hamstrings purely through a hip hinge and a neutral spine. This exercise is fantastic just for teaching that initial way of understanding how to hip hinge. That's the best application for it. And I think it's a highly valuable exercise that you can also load up and make it so it also has that intensity that I mentioned in the third mistake that people often make with training. So if you want more details about that, link to that video will be down below. The next exercise is actually an exercise from the app Tribe and kind of one of my favorite exercises at the moment because it's a little bit unique in nature. And that is the wall hamstring rock. We're gonna start kneeling on the floor with one leg straight in front of us. We're gonna place that foot and ankle right up against the wall as close as we can to it. Now from here, we're gonna bend the knee of the front leg so we can firmly plant our palms on the wall. All we're gonna do from here is we're gonna try and straighten the leg, push the hips back, but we're gonna think about trying to maintain that contact with our hands on the wall. Now, if the wall is too challenging, you can use an object to place your hands against that is comfortable for you to reach, and then eventually you get to the wall, and then to make things harder, you simply increase the gap between your foot and the wall. The further your foot is from the wall, the harder it is, the closer your body is to the wall, the easier it is. The reason I love this stretch is because of a few factors. Number one is that it has a slightly flexed foot, which means we're gonna incorporate some stretching for the calf and the sciatic nerve, which I mentioned is also an issue that people don't address when they're stretching the hamstrings. Number two is that because of the position that we're in, it's gonna help promote that initial hip hinge that we're after, the tilting of the hips that's gonna help with the hamstring stretch. But it's not gonna limit it at just being a flat back because we will allow some rounding in there because the goal is to simply keep the hands on the wall or an object. Number three is that it's often a bit more of a tolerable stretch for people to get into because the hamstring starts in a bent position, the stretch is much less. As you straighten the leg, it's kind of a nicer way to enter the hamstring stretch without getting that initial hard stretch reflex. And by thinking about contracting the quad and pulling the leg back into the socket, we can also use that to help relax the hamstring and get a better stretch. With this one, we can simply perform this four reps. I would say anywhere from eight to 10, maybe 12 repetitions in this position per side, and then finishing with a nice pause in that stretch position tends to work pretty well. The nice thing about this stretch is it can be formed in a couple of ways. You can perform one to two sets daily if you want to, or you can perform it at a little bit higher intensity and perform three, four or five sets, but only do it two to three times a week. But that is basically it for this week, guys. I wanted to share this exercise with you because it's a little bit different. It's not the best stretch. There is no best stretch when it comes to the hamstrings. Identifying the issue that you have and focusing on that will be the one that will lead to the best results for you. But I'm sure that many of you will enjoy this exercise and find it useful. That being said, I would love to hear your thoughts on today's episode. Did you find this stretch useful? Are you gonna use it? And what is your particular favorite hamstring stretch? I've covered many on this channel, like the Jefferson Curl, like the Good Morning. There are so many out there and so many that I love. What is your favorite? If you just enjoyed this video, you can always hit that thumbs up button and support the channel. Right next to it is also that subscribe button if you wanna join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe and not miss out on any more future videos. But that has been it for this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and peace. Thank you.